Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Crafty With We. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and I hope you stick around and check out my video. If you're not interested in today's video, then I suggest maybe browsing through my other videos. I've got tons of different categories and tons of topics, so check a different one out if this one's not your cup of tea. But for those of you that are interested in today's video, we are doing two things. It's dinner time, so I'm getting dinner ready real fast so that it's cooking behind the scenes while I am go outdoors and do my gardening. So tonight's dinner is going to be stuffed peppers, and I'll show you guys the recipe that I use. It's kind of a Spanish style with an American twist because I add some cheese at the end. And then, as you can see, my arrow garden behind me has maxed out. My tomato plants are... I would say about a, over a foot tall and according to the arrow garden they've been planted for 26 days i'm not sure if that's right the other one has a different number but um, you can see how tall the tomatoes get just in a few weeks of planting them in the arrow garden so i'm going to show you guys how to take those outside and plant them in containers i'm first going to put them in my greenhouse and put them in containers in there and then i'll transplant them to my raised garden bed once the danger of frost has passed we did have some freezing temperatures last night. Today is April 1st, so I do not want to risk uh, my plants freezing. Tomatoes love heat and full sun, so I'm going to uh, put them in my greenhouse first. So if you have a greenhouse, do that. If you don't have a greenhouse or a place where you can keep them from uh, freezing, you can raise your arrow garden it goes up a few levels so you can keep pushing it up as as high as it'll go until you can transplant them outside um, if not you might want to invest in just one of those cheap uh, greenhouse and they have individual small shelves and they don't cost very much so it's kind of a nice inexpensive greenhouse that you can invest in all right guys so let's get starting on cooking it's about 5:45. i'm really hungry um, so let's get started. So today, what you're gonna need for this recipe is gonna be a package of ground beef. You'll need four large red peppers and one container. Um, this one is 16 ounce container of tomato sauce. And this one is my favorite brand. I absolutely love it. It is expensive, I think it's about $5, but it is made in Italy and it is absolutely organic ingredients. It's got plum tomatoes, extra virgin olive oil, fresh garlic, fresh onions, sea salt, fresh basil, spices, and citric acid. This is amazing. Um, and I'm also gonna use some of my homemade tomato sauce, but I'm gonna use half of my can and my tomato sauce. It's a full Ziploc bag of tomato sauce that I made last year. And then you'll need some onions, some garlic, mushrooms, spices of your choice, um, two cups of rice, and the herbs, the spices of your choice that you like to put in your mix. Let's get started. Go ahead and place your meat in a pan. My favorite spices are Leslie Elizabeth brand, Osor garlic, rosemary garlic, um, tomato, I think it's called sun-dried tomato. This will go really good with today's recipe. Rosemary garlic. And I've got some garlic and onion powder. This one's from TJ Maxx. Make sure you have your rice cooking as before you prep this meal. So I have my rice cooker already going. It takes about, seems like it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get that rice cooked. So make sure you have that rice. And you can cut these as small as you like. I don't mind my food kind of chunky, so I cut mine a little bit on the bigger side. Carved the pepper, make sure you don't use a sharp knife. I'm gonna use a butter knife. And you just grab, you wanna cut the perimeters. So it's gonna be big enough 
to stuff it with rice and beef, so the hole's gotta be pretty big. So I just cut the whole top right off. You wanna remove the whole top. And usually it looks pretty good. You don't have to do too much. Sometimes there's a few seeds in there. If, if it bothers you, you can remove that. outdoors so I don't really have any particular method I haven't invested in any buckets or anything like that so I just use um, baking bowls that I have laying around and if you guys remember I labeled all of the different species of tomatoes so I've got stickers here some of you may not care if you mix your species together and just put them in your garden or in your containers but I'm a little bit picky I like to see uh, which tomatoes made it, which tomatoes got pests or a disease or something. So I like to keep track of what tomatoes are my favorite so that next year I might or might not order them again. So I do like to keep track of that. So I'm going to make several trips. Um, I'll start with a few rows and try to separate them in the bowl. And then um, I'll come back and I'll get some more in transplanting. But a quick tip, you guys, I learned that as soon as you get your plants out of the arrow garden, it's important to get them in the ground and water them right away. Whether it be in the ground or in a container, you want to water them immediately. Don't pull them out of the container and let them sit for a few minutes. I've learned from experience that if you let them sit on a countertop or in the bowl, um, it's really, really important you get them planted immediately and water them immediately. So for the next few days after you transplant them from your air garden to a container or the dirt, the ground, your raised bed, wherever it may be, it's really important to water them, uh, I would say for about four to five days thoroughly, soaking them really well. Uh, tomatoes specifically though are very picky. They like to be watered from the base. They don't like watering from the top. So if you have a garden hose and you're showering them from the top, the leaves, they will get kind of icky and like yellowy. They won't look very healthy. They don't like that. So make sure you water them from the base, like with a soaker hose or with a, a handheld watering can, just make sure you water them at the base. That's just a little tip and trick I've also learned from experience over time. All right, well, let's get started. I'm going to just grab a few here and plant them outside and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll plant some more, but I'll show you guys the process. starting a well so let's go outside and get these planted this is the soil that I bought this year for plants I got it off of Amazon and so far my plants are growing really really well in them I'm gonna re use re just recycled containers and a lot of these tomatoes I'm gonna transplant outside once they're big enough and once the dangers of frost are passed so I fill it up about halfway You want to make sure that when you plant them that the little top the little dirt top that you put in the arrow garden right here you want to make sure that this is covered with dirt all the way to the top there so this is my raised bed so 
So I'm going to plant these here on one side. Because I'm so short, I do have to climb inside. <laughs> I can't reach. So I'm going to plant the shorter ones in the front and then the taller plants in the back. They're going to wilt for the next day because they went from just water growing in the water to dirt with water. So it's normal to see your plants wilt. It's okay, just keep watering them. This water I've mixed with one scoop of fertilizer. Okay, so the first one we're gonna label are the yellow pears. Usually I use the shorter ones for like smaller plants or herbs. The taller ones I'll use when I transplant them outside in the raised beds. And then these are wooden ones. They don't last very long around here, but I usually use plastic and then I try to reuse them every year. Um, you can see last year's. I try to reuse them since they're plastic. They should last a few years. These labels. And then I will show you guys how to stake them up. So for tomatoes, they make different size stakes, shorter stakes like these, metal stakes like these, and then they have all heights. And then you've got really tall ones, which I'm going to use right away for the raised garden bed for these ones back here. They make real tall ones like this. So if I know that the plant's going to stay, I'm not going to transplant it anymore. I just immediately use a taller stake and then when they're smaller size and I know I'm going to transplant them, I'll use my shorter ones here. They also make bamboo stakes. Just be prepared. They only last about a year if you live in a wet area like I do. So if you live in a drier area, I'm sure your bamboo stakes will last longer. And I like to use this plant twist tie. Really though, any zip ties, anything you have um, will work, but I already have this. I've had this for a few years, it's pretty dirty, but it lasts a long time. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put this against the plant and then I'll zip tie it. So we'll start with the yellow pears. You can see they're still drooping even though I watered them right away. As they get bigger, they're gonna grow a lot of shoots uh, down below and each shoot can eventually turn into flowers which can turn into tomatoes eventually. Um, but if you want, a strong crop, you can focus on just the top getting tomatoes and you can just pluck the bottom like so and just keep trimming it as it grows so that it has more of an opportunity to develop. You want to just trim the bottom and it just keeps your leaves, your plant nice and healthy and really you won't need the bottom anyway. So this will kind of create like good airflow for the plant and then you'll get good strong tomatoes on the top. Fine, I'm gonna use some of my moldy bamboo stakes. Um, not necessarily the moldy side, but because my plants are so short, I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Oh, makes me feel so strong. Some of them are quite a bit smaller. to show you guys I brought some tomato cages which I brought these out to show you guys they look like so and I'll show you I'm just gonna place them in the raised bed and I'll show you how to use them so they can be a little confusing because they have the tip right here and the fat end here you want to put the narrow end on the bottom poke these spikes in the ground and push it all the way down and this will turn into a tomato support so my raised bed doesn't go very deep, so it looks like that's as far as I can go. So that is how a tomato cage works. You make tomato cage poles. I actually bought some last year, and I will use them once they get a little bit bigger. What it is is four of these, four of these real big ones, and they come with individual um, 
small pole posts in between and you connect your four poles together. You just make a square, like a box out of them and you just connect them to however, whatever height you need. It's really cool. I bought them at Home Depot online last year. Getting started for gardening, it can be quite expensive. If you think about it, eating healthy in general is expensive. I ended up transplanting my tomatoes, corn, and broccoli. I have a few more left I need to transplant after this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I was able to pass along some tips that could help you grow a beautiful garden. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bastin, if, if it's still um, my animals. As soon as you get your plants out of the arrow garden, it's important. Hello. Are you going to say you're in my ear? Come here. Come on. Let's chat. As soon as you get your plants out of the as soon as you, <laughs> I can't say it.